right, y'all, welcome back to Anti-War Radio, Chaos 92.7 FM in Austin, Texas. I'm Scott Horton. We're streaming live from chaosradioaustin.org and antiwar.com slash radio. Our guest today is Philip Giraldi. He's a former DIA and CIA officer, uh, contributing editor at the American Conservative Magazine, weekly columnist, or I guess uh, writes every couple weeks for antiwar.com, the Huffington Post, and uh, is a member of the American Conservative Defense Alliance. And he's got this new blog entry up at the American Conservative Magazine. It's amconmag.com slash blog. If Iran is attacking, it might really be Israel. Uh, very interesting stuff and very interesting in context with all the news that's been coming lately out of the war party quarters here in America and Israel in an attempt to uh, get a war with Iran before time runs out on the Bush administration. So here to give us some context and explain what's going on here with this blog entry is uh, Philip Giraldi. Welcome back to the show, Phil. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing good. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Well, uh, this is some pretty alarming stuff, and I guess this is the kind of thing that we've all thought of, that it's worth it for, I guess, any number of parties that could be named to create circumstances by which Dick Cheney could seize on them and use them as an excuse to start a war. But you seem to be writing here that your friends who still work for American intelligence agencies are worried that the Israelis might stage an attack against American assets in the region somehow and uh, use that as a pretext to start a war with Iran. Well, basically, Scott, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm putting two things together. I mean, the first thing is I think that it's uh, very plausible to make a case right at the moment that many people in Israel are intent on starting a war with Iran, as you put it, before the uh, Bush administration goes out of office. Uh, what particularly uh, alerted me to this was uh, two weeks ago in the New York Times, a piece by Benny Morris, uh, a leading Israeli historian, which uh, really pulled no punches in terms of how intensely uh, he and presumably other conservatives or right-wingers in Israel see the need for, for Iran to be attacked and for Iran to be attacked right away. And uh, people in the states like John Bolton and, and Bill Kristol are basically delivering the same message. So taking that and putting it together with, well, how, you know, it's clear that the Bush administration is kind of reluctant to get into this, and the Pentagon is also sending signals that it really doesn't want to do this at the present time. Uh, how would you go about doing this? Well, as an intelligence officer, the obvious answer comes up that comes up is uh, you arrange an incident, and, and the way you arrange an incident and, and make it look like the other guy did it is called a false flag operation. You do that kind of thing when you were in the CIA? No, I, I personally did not do anything like that. But there are a lot of historical precedents for it. The, uh, uh, you might think back to the start of the Second World War. The, uh, the Germans uh, put some of their soldiers into Polish Army uniforms and then had them attack their own colleagues to make it look like it was a sta completely staged, but it, it made it look like the Poles were attacking the Germans, which, of course, was ludicrous. Uh, the Israelis basically were doing a false flag when they attacked the USS Liberty in 1967. Uh, they had hoped to sink the ship and kill all the crewmen, and then they were going to allege that the uh, the attack had been carried out by the Egyptians. In order to bring America in on their side? Well, uh, basically to bring America in on their side, and, uh, you know, the uh, there's still some debate as to exactly why they attacked the ship. The strongest argument appears to be that they were, at that time, massacring, I believe, 4,000 Egyptian soldiers that they had captured, and they were afraid that the ship was picking up the signals that would um, would reveal that uh, a serious war crime was being committed. Mm -hmm. Did you see this headline that while in Israel, Admiral Mullen had a discussion with the Israeli government about the Liberty attack? Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of interesting. Ray McGovern came up with that when he called my attention to it, and he's... He said, basically, Mullen is sending a signal to the Israelis, or this is how he interprets it, saying, look, we're aware of your capability to try something like this, and we're going to be very much aware that that is a possibility. Uh, that's one interpretation of it. Uh, and another interesting thing is this uh, Navy lawyer, uh, Admiral J. Um, Crystal, is now doing a, a, a speaking tour of Israel 
This is the guy that a few years ago wrote a book completely exonerating the Israelis for the liberty. Uh, and interestingly enough, shortly after the book came out, there was a, a release of National Security Agency tapes which proved that the Israelis had deliberately attacked the ship, the pilots uh, talking to each other and describing it as an American vessel. And so he's doing the speaking tour, and he's now accepted the truth, or he's still pushing the propaganda? He's, he's still pushing the propaganda line that it was just a horrible mistake. Hmm. Uh, and if you talk about denial, this guy is a federal judge, a former Navy officer, and uh, is now a federal judge, I believe, in Florida. So, you know, it's kind of scary where this guy comes from. Uh, total denial, uh, in spite of all the evidence that, that demonstrates very clearly that the Israelis deliberately attacked the ship. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's still good timing on bringing the issue up. I mean, most people don't even know about it at all. So uh, I guess if he's helping keep it in the news, at least over there in Israel, that's something. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a plus. I, I, you know, I think obviously the... Uh, the, the people that uh, were killed on the Liberty, you know, they still have a very legitimate grievance that's out there. And uh, Congress has done, er and the White House have done everything they could to stonewall it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, a year ago, uh, Stephen Clemens broke the story at the Washington Note. It was later verified by uh, Joe Klein at Time Magazine and then by the New York Times that Dick Cheney had sent David Wormser around, who uh, was at the time his Middle East advisor, and was sending him around to the neocon think tank saying that Cheney no longer trusted Bush to make the right decision and start a war, so he was working on the possibility of maybe arranging something with the Israelis to get them to start it and do an end run, an insubordinate end run around the President of the United States and force his hand into the war. And apparently, you know, obviously he's been made to back down since then, but it's not over yet. Is that the kind of thing that you think might happen where the vice president could conspire with a foreign government? government to force the president's hand on something like this? Well, I think I think the actual expression that worms are used was they wanted to narrow the options. In other words, they wanted to make it so that the, the Bush administration was not talking to the Iranians and that the only options that would emerge after the uh, over the course of time would be would be military. And one of the options they were certainly thinking about was the Israeli staging uh, a preemptive attack that would pull the United States into it. And I think this is where Cheney comes into it. I think uh, Cheney, it's, uh, if you read some of um, the accounts of, uh, particularly in the Israeli media, of uh, Cheney's visit to visits, recent visits to Israel, you'll see that Cheney, I think, was basically giving the Israelis a green light uh, on his own authority to stage an attack. Now, whether this was cleared with Bush or not, I don't know, but this is the kind of thing I think that you can expect from Cheney that he'll let other players. Do the initial steps, uh, knowing very well that the the consequence of this would be the United States would be, within a matter of days, fully involved. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm really interested in the role that uh, Mullen and Gates are playing. In a sense, you could argue that they are being insubordinate. I mean, they happen to seem to be on my side in trying to stave off war rather than uh, do it Cheney style and try to force one. But they seem to basically be taking on the president in public. Although I'm suspicious that perhaps it's simply a matter of good cop, bad cop when I read things like this in uh, Haaretz where Robert Gates is saying, uh, writing in parameters, the U.S. War College Quarterly, uh, another war in the Middle East is the last thing we need, despite the fact that Iran supports terrorism, is a destabilizing force, and in his judgment is hell-bent on acquiring nuclear weapons. But... All intelligence agencies, including his, which most of the intelligence agencies are controlled by the Secretary of Defense anyway, right? They all agreed that they're not hell-bent on making nuclear weapons. So what is this guy doing, Phil? Well, I think, I think the, this is reflective of the fact that Bush has, has decided that he's not going to do anything about Iran. I think that's, that's kind of where he is. And I think when you see, when you hear from Mullen, Mullen's a team player, and so is Gates to a large extent. These guys are sending the administration signal that we are not welcoming a war right at the present time, which is not to say that there aren't very strong currents in the United States government, led by Cheney and, and, and others, um, uh, or, uh, some even in the Pentagon, like, uh, like Eric Edelman, that very much would like to see a war with Iran. So this is a kind of situation there that can tip another way. But I think that Bush has decided that there's just no advantage in doing this now, that it's, it's too late in the administration and that there are, are too many downside consequences to it, even particularly for John McCain's candidacy if something were to start and go wrong. So there, there are a lot of issues there. But I, I suspect that Mullen 
and Gates are actually kind of speaking for the president, believe it or not. 